Looks like it's time for our heroes to make like an escalator and level up. What will they buy? What will they learn? Find out this week on D&D Minus. So here's what I will say. This is the first thing that we've done that is my idea. That is not like, oh, this is what D&D podcasts do. It may suck. And if it sucks, I promise I will delete it and the world will never hear it. So here's the goal, right? Usually when you level up in D&D, there's this weird episode of the D&D podcast where everyone's like, where is it on my sheet? It's there. It's next to your shield. I don't have a shield. Mine is a heart. And it's just, it's fucking horrifying to listen to. So I have decided to level you up and let you go shopping through a series of dramatic vignettes. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anna, my wife who supports me. Ooh. No, no. I take away your inspiration point. You didn't ooh fast enough. <laughs> We're not in the game yet. <laughs> Oh look, who's a fucking expert now? All right, so I'm gonna ta- <laughs> uh, we're gonna so I'm gonna take you guys through a series of, of solo vignettes. Then you're all gonna go shopping <laughs> together. Are you ready? So, Heath, we're going to start with you. At the end of the last episode, you went up to your room to get some rest, only to find your patron, Gladys, staring back at you. And as you'll remember, she said, Dave, honey, we got to talk. My patron? Was that? Yeah. The like fiend. The, the, oh, my fiend who gives me the spells? Her name was Gladys? I, did, I wasn't yep. aware of that. Your patron is a fiend named Gladys who appears as a fur-covered, older, fabulous woman, and she is now staring at you from the other side of the mirror. The only other time you've seen her is when you got your powers from her and ran away. And so she says to you, look, kid, when we first met, you were scared. I was scared. It was a disconcerting experience for everybody. But uh, turns out I talked to Golgamax and, of course, Salphalas, and, uh, of course, the Fire King himself, and it turns out that until you die, uh, we're stuck with each other, kids, so what do you say? You want to work together, or should I work on speeding what, up your replacement? What, what would we be uh, working together on? Oh, I'm glad you asked, darling. I'm talking about fiend work, starting villages, starting homes, but for now... Sounds like we're going to be in a musical together, the, based what, on your tone of voice. When you're <laughs> up. And the, you just see like lights start to go off behind. She goes into a little dance number. There's little devils with like Hitler on a stick <laughs> dancing behind. She's super disappointed that you don't join her, just so you know. Wait, I didn't say no to the musical. I was just saying that's what it sounds like is about to happen. Well, you were right, baby. Okay. You were right the whole time. Fantastic. Cat number. I'm in. And then <laughs> she cats. She casts uh, Irresistible Dance on you, and you do it like an awesome tap number for about five seconds, and then she dispels the spell. Okay. How sweet was that tap number? That was pretty sweet. Thank you. That, that was pretty sweet, honey, let me tell you. But here's the thing, kid. This Queen of Chaos business that you know who's been talking about, I, it's actually pretty important to Mama Gladys, if you get my meaning, that uh, this Queen of Chaos bitch doesn't get out and start fucking shit up. So uh, mm. I'll tell you what. How about for my first little assignment for you, you uh, go along to get along until the moment's right, if you know what I mean? I do not know what you mean. I mean, you help out the other t- three Okay, people. just say what you mean, because it's like a... Specific adventure. I feel like I, I'm a demon and I like to talk <laughs> right. in big you, showy yeah, metaphors. I, I hear I hear you doing that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to help out the other people that I was just hanging out with earlier. Yes. Okay. But. Are you going to give me more magic? I'm glad. 
glad you asked, darling. Come on down. And then all of a sudden, she steps through the mirror, and the room around you fills with a golden, brilliant light. And slowly but surely, you see things melt away. The the bed is melted away and becomes sort of what you recognize as a late night host couch. There's a desk that grows next to it that she's suddenly sitting behind in a suit with broad lapels. And she says, Dave, honey, have a seat. And as she says that, out of nowhere, you just hear audiences applauding and laughing along and cheering. And, Dave, 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 Dave. Awesome. I'm coming on down. Uh, One dollar. Well, I don't know what game are we playing. How does it go? I'll tell you what we're playing, honey. It's called Let's Get Magic. Spell spell. Okay, spell struck. Got it. sitting out front of the squeaky wheel, smoking some snogsbane, when Floon comes over to you, and he looks kind of nervous and secretive. All right. Should I should I cast a, a what is it, where I, like, uh, try to figure out what the fuck he's going to say before he says it? You can roll an insight check if you'd like, but I think he wants to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more fun if I get to roll fucking dice, but okay, Do fine. No, roll an, <laughs> roll an roll, insight I'm check. I'm going to roll three different dice. I rolled a cumulative... 11 on a 20 <laughs> on a 20 a 10 no i'm sorry a 20 a 12 and a 4 i still only got 11 so it's a good thing that he's just gonna tell me any fucking way he has a heart attack and dies right there <laughs> he dies he dies like john ritter <laughs> too soon and beloved by all you just killed flu and everyone loved that character got a lot of positive feedback and no you didn't i did not sense it still exists in the vacuum as of recording this uh, Snedrick, <laughs> may, may, I, may, my, may, may, may I speak to you? Sit down, down, man. Come with it with all the stuttering and whatnot. Just privately, I have, I have something <laughs> I'd like to give you. Has it been in your butt, man? Well, just be <laughs> I honest. don't know why you won't keep asking that. I brought a lovely cake the other day, and everyone immediately assumed it had been inside my butt. <laughs> I've never put anything inside my butt. Oh, you're missing out, man. Holy shit. All right, anyway, so, sorry, you were yeah, saying something about... Yeah, we'll talk about, about that later, because yeah. now I'm intrigued. Anyways, I, I, I don't know that Blade would agree, but I think you should have this. And he hands you the Wand of Seven Parts. Well, that's nifty, man. That's awful. That's awful nice of you, I reckon. Yes, you see, it, it contains powerful magic, and I don't know, I think it would just be ridiculous not to use the magic to help find the other seven parts. Am I, am I crazy? No, I mean, I saw you do a thunder wave with it earlier, which is pretty badass. I mean, I already can do that just because I'm so magical to begin with. But yeah, no, that, seemed, that makes a ton of sense, man. Yes, but legend says, as the wand's part comes together, the wand becomes more powerful. If in a matter of months or years you've collected two, three parts, you'll have a powerful magical object at your disposal <laughs> opposed to just sitting here with Blade watching over it. Yeah, I like that idea. Now let me ask you this, though. That thing about not putting stuff in your butt, is that just a personal rule you have, or is that with the instructions of the wand? Did it come with it? I mean, honestly, no one ever told me not to put it in my butt. And I will tell you, honestly... I considered it. I bet you did, man. I can see how the little round bit at the top kind of makes it enticing. Well, that's that's awful nice of you, Floon Poff. I, I'll I'll take that and keep it somewhere safe, if you know what I mean. Mm, yes. Do you mean you're going to put it in your butt? Because it is it is sort of the MacGuffin, and I feel like if you put it in your butt, it's sort of. Well, you know, I just figure edge. that way nobody will want to take it from me later. I can just be like, hey, man, that thing's been in my butt for a while, even when I was sweaty. That's... That is a really, really good point. Like, I cannot be, uh, I could not be more on board with that. I mean, uh, honestly, like, I know there are supposed to be, like, demons and liches and gods and devils that uh, associate with the other parts. But honestly, if any of them just come in, you could just be like, nope, that was really just pressed against my sphincter. And, and they'll, they'll back right away. Great. Plan. Or if they don't, I'll at least know what kind of demon or lichen I'm dealing with. Don't get excellent. Yeah, wonderful. Then you sort of get a view into their proclivities. 
Anyway, I have another gift for you as well. All right. Does this one have beads on it? It does not. <laughs> yeah. Follow me. And he leads you on a winding trail through the streets and narrows of the city until finally you come to a pale wooden door with a tiny hole in it that matches, as you find out, the ring that he wears, the Puff family ring. He presses it into the door and it glows bright red. The wood bursts into flame and melts away to ashes and you both step through into the largest library of magic books you, Snedrick Ferndangle, have ever seen. Yes, I, um, I know that you were uh, removed from your magic school before you got a chance to pick your specialization, and while the Puff Library certainly isn't complete, it is uh, quite impressive, so uh, help yourself. All right. Kla, are you ready? Sure. So, Kla, you are in the back courtyard, sparring with none other than Blade Vigil. He's sort of easily deflecting your blows, and he's getting more and more frustrated with you as you spar. And after an especially sloppy attack, he gets in your guard, throws you to the ground, and says... No, no, no! You fight like you're still in the gladiator pits. Your abilities don't come from your body, Claw. They come from your mind. Focus your mind and try again. Morgan, roll a wisdom check for me. A 20? Yeah, d20. 10. 10. Uh, it happens slowly, but as you're breathing <laughs> and focusing, and, and certainly not smoothly... As you're breathing, all of a sudden you feel something you've never felt before. An almost tangible energy inside you that kind of feels like you have butterflies in your stomach, except it feels so much more real. And it, it has a very obvious purpose. It, you've never felt this way before, but this energy, this new feeling wants to flow through your arms and legs in the form of an attack. What do you do? So I'm a Jedi. You are a monk, so pretty much. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> this super sounds like You're I'm a Jedi. You're very much a Jedi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I steal something, Morgan. I mean, just you roll with it. You've made it your guy. Roundhouse kick to the face. No, I want to steal something. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You're a monk. <laughs> I kind of, like, faint. The previous move that Blade Vigil was able to get in under my guard, I faint as if I'm going to repeat the same thing and so see if he you takes step the bait. forward to faint, <laughs> but unlike the tiny step you expected to take, you leap at lightning speed a hundred feet past Blade behind him, and he sort of spins around, absolutely shocked that you've managed to do this, and he says. All right. Maybe I didn't count on this. What do you think of this? And he runs full speed at you and aims his fist at the center of your chest. I uh jump get punched in the chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take the hit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want your vignette so badly to just be like, yeah, he gets your solar plexus and you're on the ground for a while. You're doing that thing where you knock the wind out of yourself. <laughs> Claw's vignette was weird. <laughs> you have to just take the punch in the chest. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yep, I think I'm going to go you, with that. Sit there and you just think to yourself, I'm going to take the punch in the chest. Now, why you do that, I don't know. There's no real explanation, but you decide you're going to take the punch in the chest. And again, you feel this energy sort of build up inside you. And without intending to, <laughs> you just sort of blur to the side and his punch misses and he slams into the wall behind you. Now, Blade Vigil sort of gets up, looks down at his chin. He's got a little bit of blood off it and says, you know what, Claw? That's not bad. Not bad at all.
Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Um, Hope you're enjoying it so far. We have had a ton of fun doing this, and we're so grateful that we get to make this a podcast. Like, how lucky are we to play Dungeons & Dragons and people actually want to listen to it? So, so, so grateful for that. Uh, If you haven't already, uh, tell your friends about the show. You know, send someone an email, tweet about the episodes, use hashtags, all that kind of stuff. Tell people about the show. Or follow us on Twitter, um, at... P-I-A-T pod, where you can find out about all of our shows, not just this one, and find out about upcoming live shows and events and stuff, and interact with our internet guy, Tim, who's absolutely awesome, so there's lots of cool stuff for that. Um, If you haven't given us a five-star review on iTunes yet, that super-duper helps, so please take a moment and do that. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash DND minus and pledge some money per episode to help make the show a reality. You know, our eventual goal is for podcasting to be the only thing that Morgan and Anna have to do. And so every dollar counts towards that, which is really exciting. Um, Yeah, so that's about it. Thanks so much for listening to the show. I'll let you get back to it. And as I said before the record, Bridget, uh, you will be getting a new power, but not on this episode. So okay. uh, you're all packing up for your journey to Bridget's hometown of Sea Crash when Blade and Floon come in and gather you around. And Blade says, well, I thought you all might like to spend a little bit of that gold I gave you before you go. Now... I'd be lying if I said the swordsmiths and the armorers in this city would accept anything close to the funds we have on hand, but, um, I do know a guy we could bring you to Gary. Oh, no, Blade, not Gary, says Floon. Who else works for cheap, says Blade. Oh, I suppose so, says Floon. So Blade leads you deep into the sewers under the city, and you walk for what feels like an hour until finally they open up into a vast underground chamber. And along one wall, you see an earthen hut that appears to have been built into the wall of the chamber with a wooden sign outside, poorly drawn, that says, Gary's Magic Stuff. (laughs) What do you suppose he does when it rains and the sewers get full? Believe me, you guys don't want to know. No, she asked. She does want to know. I legitimately asked just now. <laughs> oh, he, his, his little hut gets swept away Soaked by a tide shit. of water and shit is what happens. Uh, and then he so whines hard. to me I, about it for like I, a month. Are you happy? You happy you know now? <laughs> yes. Never okay. been happier. All right. You guys have weird ways of being happy. Well, <laughs> after you. So inside the door, I assume you're all going in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is so it raining? In- it's not, no, it is not raining. <laughs> Good looking out. So inside is the strangest shop you have ever seen. There are swords made of glass next to what appears to just be open dishes of food. Price tags <laughs> you are mean labeled pieces in pieces of broken glass. No, swords, swords made of glass. Made of yeah. glass. Yeah. Next to Magic. like open yeah, next to what open dishes of food. Their price tags are labeled in all sorts of things. I mean, some of them are in gold pieces, but they're also labeled in things like your sense of smell or your happiest memory. And in the center of it all, sitting at what he obviously thinks that is a counter, but is very much not, is the largest <laughs> and strangest earth elemental the four of you have ever seen. Oh, hey guys, welcome back! Cool. Never been here before. We've never but been here. Thank you. You have it? No. Uh, no. Are you sure? Hey. I feel like I recognize you. Are you guys here for some magic stuff? Okay. Oh, yes. I like this fella. <laughs> well, come on around. So he sort of gathers you around a table. 
says, Blade already told me you're working with a fixed budget, so the first one is on the house. And he opens a chest of these goods that he's given you. And the chest contains a penny whistle, a coin with one black side and one perfectly silver side. Mine. A bag of jelly beans. What appears to be a bag of holding. A ring with a small flower on the end of it. A small stuffed bunny. A common cloak. A rock. (laughs) A a blank book. A magic eight ball. The toy? (laughs) Yep. Okay. A wheel of cheese. A flask. Two masks. A page of a diary. Another cloak that has a big symbol of bread written on the front. Another rock, a cloak that has a thief's dagger drawn on it. Two sets of brass knuckles, one that says thoughts and the other that says prayers. (laughs) Sounds like a Walmart. And he points inside the chest and goes, go on, guys, grab something. Like they always say, first one's on the house. I eat some cheese and jelly beans. Wait, you just took two. All right. Uh, Sure. Does anybody have sense magic? (laughs) <laughs> what magic? Does anybody have like a, a sense magic spell? Sense? No. Uh-uh. Sense whether All something's right. magic. Detect yeah. magic, yeah. Detect magic. I do not. I could, I could poison um, the stuff. <laughs> nope. That wouldn't help. I feel like, thanks though. I appreciate okay. it. So don't do that. So don't do that. Got it. <laughs> Claw, why don't we start with you because you called dibs on the coin. Do you actually reach in and grab the coin? Yep. The all or nothing coin. Oh, that's really good. You're gonna love that thing. Really lucky, or you know, um, really not lucky. So, Morgan, you now have the all or nothing coin on a roll where you would normally use a d20. You are now allowed to flip a coin instead. A heads means it is a critical success, and a tails means it is a critical failure, and you can use that twice per short rest. Cool. That's actually awesome. That's a really yeah. good yeah. pick. Yeah, because I can yeah. steal more now. Now, Snedrick, you called dibs on the stuffed bunny. Yes, Would sir. Would you I like did. the stuffed bunny? I want the stuffed bunny. Ooh, bun burn of soothing. You're going to love that guy. He's great <laughs> for a sad situation. <laughs> so, Snedrick, you now have the bun bun of soothing. <laughs> bun bun is a tattered looking stuffed rabbit toy, which seems to be forever on the verge of falling to pieces, but never does. Chewing on or stroking the bun bun as an action, cast the spell Calm Emotions with a DC of 12 plus the bearer's charisma modifier. The bun bun has two charges and resets after being cuddled through a long rest. All right, so now can I use that to calm like Morgan the fuck down when he's deciding to steal shit? If you can get him to stroke it or chew on it, it will cast calm emotions on him with a DC of 12 plus your charisma modifier. So, yes. Awesome. So, you're just going to be like dangling that over Morgan like a cat toy. <laughs> just <laughs> stuffing it in his mouth. Yes. Yes. Well, well that. Tw- twice a day. Only twice a day. <laughs> only twice a day. Might I ask a question about any one of the items before I choose it? Yeah, absolutely. What's this thoughts and prayers brass knuckles thing going on? (laughs) Oh, those ones you gotta be careful of. Do you want Mm. them? I want, I'd like to know about them first. I don't want to ruin the surprise. Well, (laughs) I guess as the only neglectful and unhappy religious person in this room, I'm going to go ahead and pick them up. All right. So you now have the. Thoughts and prayers, brass knuckles. The left is inscribed with thoughts, and the right, as I said, is inscribed with the word prayers. When you make a melee attack, on a hit, thoughts does plus three psychic damage, prayers does plus three radiant damage. Oh, it is I rendered, love this. however, it is ineffective on enemies who use firearms or any non magical weapons. <laughs> oh, so it's so it's only effective against magical people. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers only works on people who believe in magic. magic. (laughs) So I could, wait a second, I could conceivably, I could conceivably, like the the best people to to use these against would be gods themselves. 
Gods, absolutely. Wizards, anyone like that. But just like a normal guard with a spear doesn't work. Oh, but yeah. you could you That's could great. talk the guard yeah. into believing in like Christianity and then hit him with the knuckle. Yep. If you convert ah. anyone to a religion, that'll work. <laughs> I like that. Dave, I believe you are the only one who hasn't gotten any magic. I have not stuff. gotten a magic item yet. He said he ate the cheese and jelly beans. No, I, I thought about eating it, but for real, I'm going to ask <laughs> if I can uh, have one jelly bean and one like handful of cheese before I decide. Oh, well, I mean, I'm not going to stop you. Okay, I'm doing it. So you eat um, one, one jelly bean and handful one handful of cheese. Of cheese. But I've I'm decided so not to take either one of these. They're pretty good. Um, uh, okay. Wait, wait. What are the effects of these these uh, things going to be on on Dave? Oh, I'm glad you asked. See, he just <laughs> took a big bite out of the exploding cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we're in the sewers, huh? <laughs> so this oddity is considered by some arcane tricksters to be a most amusing way to eliminate a foe. Created through a complex alchemical process, this cheese is delicious, nourishing, and perfectly safe until a special primer made of oil is added this starts an alchemical reaction that causes the cheese to explode spectacularly on explosion one handful of cheese causes 3d6 <laughs> force damage and fire damage to all within a five foot radius of the origin square one can make a dexterity saving throw of DC 12 to half the damage unless you have eaten it. <laughs> One drop of oil causes an explosion within an hour. Two drops reduce the delay to a minute. Three drops to a round and four make it explode immediately. Wow. So you've eaten some exploding cheese, but it doesn't appear that he's applied the oil to it. But you don't know. Um, and then you said you ate <laughs> one jelly bean, right? Yes. Do me a favor. Will you roll a d12? I've never been so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling a d12. I rolled a one. Rolled a one. <laughs> the candy makes you feel sick to your stomach. You vomit green slime and take 1d6 of poison damage. Do I have to roll a d6 or do you do, do you No, do you're going to heal after this anyway, so you f throw up from the <laughs> you throw up from the jelly bean. So, this okay. is the wondrous bag of jelly beans. Inside the bag are 12 jelly beans. Eating a jelly bean grants a temporary magical effect and you roll a d12 to find out what it is. You have now eaten one of them, so there are 11 jelly beans left in the bag. Pretty cool, right? Extraordinary jelly beans. Yeah, but that is pretty cool, but I'm not going to take those either. Just choose a fucking magical Okay, item. I want the I want the cloak with the loaf of bread. Is that what you want? Yep. Are you sure? Wait. Wait, what? It's a, what, it's a cloak a... with a loaf of bread? I believe there was a cloak with a loaf of bread insignia. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a normal oh. sort of linen robe, except it's got a giant loaf of bread sort of stamped onto the back. Aye. <laughs> Not the flask? I thought heavily about the flask, but... Not the flask? Um, I feel like this loaf... There was, wasn't there also a cloak with... Yes, there's a cloak right there with like a, a dagger on it. No, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a doozy. Mm. Which, yeah. would you, which would you recommend, you Magic the flask? Store Guy? Oh, Me? Yeah. I absolutely, 100% recommend the robe with the bread on it. Why do you get all the fucking hints I and like, I got nothing? I would like, can I roll a, uh, some a, sort of check on dagger. whether he's lying to me about which is better? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. That's an insight check. Insight check? Mm-hmm. All right. Does one of you guys have, like, big insight that you could roll for me on this? I have crazy good insight, I think. I also have crazy good insight, but I'm not going to roll for you. <laughs> I, I will go with the uh, loaf of bread one. Uh, I'll trust uh -uh. your judgment. You won't regret it, Fred. And he hangs the robe over your shoulders. So this is the robe of summon bread plus one. While wearing this drab colored linen robe, you gain a plus one bonus <laughs> to AC. As an action, you can reach into the one of the robe's excessively loose sleeves and pull out a fist-sized roll for a small loaf of bread. The bread conjured this by this robe is of a random type, flavor, and ingredient, but it is always <laughs> of at least average quality. The bread is real, it's edible, and it's food, 
but it disappears if it's not eaten within one hour of its creation. Each time I reach in for bread, I have to eat it within an hour or it disappears? Or it disappears, yeah. Okay. Well, somebody has to eat it. But it, it's yeah. like unlimited? Unlimited. Come here. Come here. I want to tell you something really yeah. cool. Cool. What? I, think I haven't done it. a lot of exploring with this thing since mm. I made it. Right. But the other day, I reached inside... And it was a cheddar bay biscuit from Red Lobster. I love those. I love those <laughs> so much. Fucking great. Oh, all right, all right. Can I, can I try right now? To can I try right now to get a, a cheddar bay biscuit? Rich inside. Yeah, see right. what it is. I'm gonna see. I'm checking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, do me a favor. Yeah. Roll a D ten. Okay. And twice, and tell me what you got. All right. I got a six and. Five. Okay, six five. Also, huge shout out to whichever crazy person on Reddit created a bread table for the robe of summoned bread. Um, whatever mental hospital you're in, if you're listening to this, know that I love you and I'm so so grateful. Okay, you pull out a long and hard loaf of rye bread, deliciousness level four. Nice. Four out of what? Who knows? Four, <laughs> four <laughs> the demons that infest the person Four deliciousness <laughs> units. Go fuck yourself. Four yummers, yummers. Please read the other 99 fucking entries that I put into this item. All right. And that is your trip to Gary's Magic Stuff. So you return to the squeaky wheel with your new possessions and you set off for the island of Sea Crash. Hell yeah. Sea Crash? Or bust. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.